Hey guys, it's the med studio and today we'll be looking at hernias. So what is a hernia? A hernia is when an internal part of the body pushes through a weakness in the muscle or surrounding tissue wall. This often occurs in the abdominal or hip region. Patients with hernias can present with a swelling which has reducibility, meaning that the swelling disappears when lying down. A positive cough reflex can help to differentiate hernias from other swellings and lumps. This is when the hernia bulges out while the patient coughs. Often there can also be signs of bowel obstruction and the three main signs include distension, vomiting and absolute constipation, meaning that the patient is not passing any wind or faeces. Anyone can be susceptible to hernias, but there are several contributing factors. These include increased heavy lifting and sporting activities, as these can cause an increase in intra-abdominal pressure, and hence increasing the risk of a protrusion occurring. Abdominal distension, for example, ascites, pregnancy, males are more prone to hernias than females. Anything that results in weak abdominal muscles such as cachexia and obesity, constipation and similarly conditions like COPD can cause increased coughing which leads to a rise in intra-abdominal pressures. Hernias can be differentiated based on their location and features. For instance, when the contents of the hernia sac are stuck inside by adhesions, they are also known as incarcerated hernias. And these could even lead to obstructions or strangulations of the hernia. So a strangulation is when there is a lack of blood supply to the hernia, as it's trapped and hence there's ischemia. This patient can then become toxic and hence requires urgent surgery. Obstructed hernias mean that the contents of the bowel cannot pass through, resulting in bowel obstruction. Most often, hernias are named using their locations. The most common type is in the inguinal region. They're most associated with the inguinal canal, and in men, this canal is larger, meaning that it's more common in men. The different types of inguinal hernias can be identified due to their differences in entrances. The inguinal canal opens via the deep inguinal ring and exits via the superficial inguinal ring. The deep inguinal ring is present at the midpoint between the aces and the pubic tubercle. Inguinal hernias can be further split into two subtypes, indirect and direct inguinal hernias. Firstly, indirect inguinal hernias occur when the abdominal contents protrude through the deep inguinal ring and out via the superficial ring. Another type is the direct inguinal hernia. Here the contents of the abdominal wall do not protrude through the deep inguinal ring. Instead, they can pass through a weakness in the abdominal wall, known as the Hesselbach's triangle, or otherwise known as the inguinal triangle. Apart from the layers of the abdominal wall, this area doesn't really contain any anatomical structures. The borders include the rectus abdominis muscle, the iliopubic tract and the inferior epigastric vessels. Another common type of hernia is known as the femoral hernia. The femoral vessels pass through the femoral canal. However, hernias can occur in the groin and through the femoral canal. This is more common in females due to them having anatomically wider pelvises. These hernias tend to be irreducible and can strangulate. Paraumbilical hernias are found just above the umbilicus, as the name suggests. This often occurs when the rectus sheath is weak due to risk factors such as obesity and multiple pregnancies. The management associated with this type of hernia includes the repair of the rectus sheath. Some patients can have a small defect in the linear alba, 
between the ziphy sternum and the umbilicus, resulting in an epigastric hernia. Presentation includes epigastric pain similar to peptic ulcers. For patients who've had previous surgeries, incisional hernias can appear along the lines of the previous incision. This type of hernia occurs up to 20% of cases in surgery. And that brings us to the end of this video. Hope you guys found it really useful. Please remember to like, subscribe and comment below. And follow me on Instagram at the Medstudier.